นั้นอยู่สลัมมีบ้านมาแล้วเลียงตามรายทางให้มึงได้ฟังไว้ให้กลับไปเขียนรายงานอ่ะพวกกูนั่นอยู่ของไตไม่สนว่าใครจะไล่มันไล่พวกกูออกไปแล้วกูก็ชูนิ้วกลางให้เลยโอเค since he heard the news eleven fingers the rapper is angry in two years his neighborhood Klong Toy the most populated ghetto in Bangkok will disappear a large real estate project promises to raise the entire neighborhood and replace it with office towers and shopping malls evicting all current inhabitants what do you think of the government's plan to make us all move out do you want to go and live in a tower we would agree to move if they have a better option for us because we're a big family I have many children Most of Klong Toy's residents are day laborers. For them, making ends meet is a constant battle. I'm a cleaning lady. I earn about 180 euros a month. Rent here is 60 euros a month. To make ends meet, I took a loan, and I have to give 20% of what I earn to repay this loan. That's life in the ghetto. I have nothing left. In spite of people's struggles, it's a tight-knit community. Some families have been living there for two or three generations. There's a big difference with the rest of Bangkok. Here in the ghetto, people never move. They do not leave. They stay in the same home. If you go anywhere else in Bangkok, people never stop moving from one neighborhood to another. Here, we don't move. That's why we're like a big family, and I hope it won't change. Residents here don't own their own land. It belongs to the Port Authority, who have rented it to them for decades. Millions of square meters of prime real estate, and now they intend to sell it. All that is ours. The villagers claim that the land belongs to them, which isn't true. But we've got three options for them. Firstly, we're offering to help them to move to go and live in high-rise blocks with schools and markets. Secondly, they move and we offer them houses in the countryside in the district of Minburi. We even guarantee them ownership of a small portion of land, and thirdly, they move and we give them compensation money. The hundred thousand people who will be forced to move are some of the poorest and most vulnerable in Bangkok. For this politician, the project is inevitable, but requires a dignified relocation of its residents. So where we are standing here, there used to be rails going across here, and people are living. Uh, to the left, to the right of the railway, because uh, it's been that, like that for so long, and uh, I think just most of people here has been here for generations. And to be able to live here and to move away, it's going to be very heartbroken for them. So we have to find a way to actually move them to a better place and to a better living condition. However, these conditions are unlikely to be met. According to a study conducted by the Pre-Tip Foundation, which has been working in Klong Toy for 40 years, the project is unlikely to benefit its residents. The Port Authority, they suggest that they're going to relocate people in, in, into this area. So not, not possible. Not possible for, uh, for them to just live in a very uh, small area, but the, the Port Authority, they're going to put the highlight, but highlight is uh, also cost a lot of money for the maintenance, but we don't know how they are going to uh, manage. This isn't the first time people from a ghetto have been forced to move. It happened in the district of Ding Dang 30 years ago. Since then, all the relocated residents have moved out, as the building manager explains. When people arrived here 30 years ago, charges and rent were affordable. It was okay. But it never stopped increasing. And after a while, the poorest people who came from the ghettos, they had to leave, simply because they could not pay anymore. These may be Klong Toy's final days. After decades of providing their labor to the city, its residents have become less valuable than the real estate and will have to go.